Hey gamers, I'm Chris and this is Treant Monk's Temple, the place where knowledge is power. Today we're doing our third level lists. We're going to talk about the most overrated, the most underrated, the best, and the worst. This is the list I've been waiting for. These are my favorite spells that I get for most characters in my game. In fact, coming down to a list of only three best spells is really quite hard. My short list was about seven spells. So there's going to be some cuts here that are pretty hard to make, but I made them. So we'll talk about those spells another time. For today, let's get started. So let's get started with our worst list. And starting at number three on my worst list is the spell Flame Arrows. I don't know if I'm missing something here, because this spell doesn't seem to have much going for it. Its concentration changes 12 pieces of ammunition into special fire ammunition that does an additional 1d6 points of fire damage if it hits. So you can give this ammunition to, say, your fighter and maybe get an additional 2d6 fire damage per round. That's not very good, and that's only if you hit. Maybe there's some special use for this. Maybe in a party of entirely archers this might be useful. But in 99% of situations, this spell is just going to be one of your worst choices for third level. And thus, it's on my list for worst spell. So that brings us to our second worst spell at third level. My choice for second worst spell is Wall of Sand. Now I've been an advocate of wall spells for years and years, and I've always been a fan of a good wall spell. But this spell is not a good wall spell, and in my opinion, it's not a wall spell at all. This spell slows movement and blocks vision, and that's it. Well, I could slow movement with first level spells, and I can block vision with cantrips. I don't need third level slots and my concentration to perform such minor effects. Now, if this spell was, say, a first level spell, I think it would be a decent spell. And at second level, maybe okay. But at third level, this spell is way, way underpowered for what it should be doing. So that's why this spell makes my list as second worst spell at third level. So that brings us to our worst spell at third level. And in my opinion, the worst spell at third level is Catnap. Now I know I talked about how great short rests were just the last video. But the thing is, is last video we were talking about a spell that gives you a 100% safe short rest for your entire party using a second level spell. So now we can use a third level spell to get an unsafe short rest and then by unsafe I mean worse than a regular short rest because a regular short rest you don't have to be unconscious for this one you do and it's only good for three party members it, and all this just to reduce the short rest time from one hour to ten minutes you're still in danger in ten minutes and you're in so much more danger if you can't stand the danger of a one hour short rest while you're conscious you definitely don't want to be unconscious for ten minutes this is an awful deal, and it's dangerous. And we had a safe method to get a short rest already using a lower level spell. I don't know what the designers were thinking here, because this spell really doesn't have any use for us. So it is my worst spell at third level. So those are the worst, now let's talk about the best. You know what's hard? Making a list of only three best third level spells. Third level is a great level for spells and it would be so easy to make a much longer list here. So easy that I'm going to put some honorable mentions at the end. But the first spell at number three, best spell at third level, I'm choosing Counterspell. Oh, I know, you can't believe it. Counterspell at number three, not number one. I know. Counterspell is the spell that changes the game because it takes high-level spellcaster enemies and makes them manageable with a regular party especially if you can have more than one person with this spell ready, then even the most powerful casters can be brought down to nothing with the spell Counterspell. Counterspell is a spell that makes wizards and sorcerers the premier spell casters in the game because they can take down clerics and bards with ease. Now, the only reason that this didn't make number one on my list is because not every fight is against a spell caster. In fact, most fights aren't. And that's, that makes this spell somewhat circumstantial. Now it's really, really great in that circumstance. But outside of that, then it's no use at all. So that's why it only makes number three of my best spell list. So on we go with our list. And now we're up to our second best spell at third level. 
Now, if you remember last video, I talked about Spiritual Weapon, and I said one of the reasons Spiritual Weapon is such a great spell is because it doesn't use the concentration, and that means you can combine it with Spirit Guardians. And Spirit Guardians is my choice for second best spell at third level. Spirit Guardians might just be the best blast spell in the game. Now, I know that 3d8 around doesn't sound like much, but if you think about it, the average combat probably lasting three or four rounds. So three or four rounds at 3d8 around, so we're talking 9d8 or 12d8 damage with one third level spell. That's a lot more than you're going to get with, say, a fireball. But unlike a fireball, this spell is going to do radiant or necrotic damage. Neither of those are resisted as much as fire, radiant being probably the better choice of the two. Also, this doesn't have friendly fire, which means you can wade right into the enemies, you kind of have to because it radiates from you, and it will, won't hurt your allies and it will hurt your enemies every round. It's lovely, and you know what? It does it right because the enemies take the damage at the beginning of their round, like they're supposed to in a civilized world. Spirit Guardians also, one of the best things about Spirit Guardians is its scaling. If you cast a fireball at a higher level, you get an additional 1d6 damage. That's not very much. But with Spirit Guardians, you're getting 1d8 damage every round. So again, looking at a three or four round combat, that's 3d8 or 4d8 damage per level. That's huge. It makes Spirit Guardians a worthwhile casting at fourth level, fifth level, sixth level. And even a high level cleric is still gonna rely on this spell to do damage to enemies, and it's still gonna deliver. And that's why this spell is an easy choice for me for best spell, second best spell for third level. Okay, so let's talk about the best spell at third level. Now my choice for best spell for third level is Hypnotic Pattern. The reason I've chosen Hypnotic Pattern as the best spell for third level is because at third level we start to have spells that disable large numbers of foes. These are all good spells, but the thing about Hypnotic Pattern that the other spells don't have is it doesn't provide a saving throw at the end of each round, and it lasts for up to a minute, that's 10 rounds. That means you can disable a large number of foes, and by disable I mean they're charmed, they're incapacitated, and their speed is reduced to zero, so they are out of the fight. And they are out of the fight for the full 10 rounds as long as you maintain the concentration. So what this means in, in terms of tactics is you can have a large group of enemies. Let's, let's say you have 10 high level fighters and they've attacked your party and you manage to fire off a hypnotic pattern at them. And let's say seven fail their saving throw. So now you're fighting three high level fighters. Those seven are completely out. They don't get to join in. Once you've defeated those three, now you can take on those other seven fighters one at a time. I shouldn't need to tell you how huge that is tactically. Now, as soon as you hit them, the hypnotic pattern ends, but that's fine. You just don't hit them until you're ready to take them on. So this is why hypnotic pattern is such a great spell. And the thing about hypnotic pattern is it's going to remain a great spell for you. This is the kind of spell that you're going to access at fifth level, but you're also going to access it at seventh level, at 10th level, at 15th level, and still have it be effective for you. That's not very common with third level spells. And that is why this is an easy pick for me, for my best spell at third level. Let's move on and talk about the most overrated spells at third level. My choice for the third most overrated spell at third level is Call Lightning. Now, Call Lightning, I understand this is an iconic spell for druids. And I understand a lot of druids being excited about getting this spell. But if you look at the mechanics of this spell, it really isn't fitting of a third level slot. I mean, I can cast Moonbeam which is a second level spell with a third level slot. And I don't have the requirement of the high ceiling. I don't have the requirement of firing it every round unless I need to move it. And it's doing equivalent damage, except Radiant, which is very seldom resisted. So this spell just seems to be worse. Of course, then there's Stormy Weather. If you do have Stormy Weather and you're outside, then you're doing 40-10 damage each round with this. 40-10 damage still isn't that much for a third level spell. And considering how circumstantial that is, I don't really consider it a great amount of weight in terms of taking this spell. So for those reasons, I think this spell is a pretty easy choice for overrated.
So that brings us to our second most overrated spell at third level, and I'm going to surprise zero people here by bringing up the spell Fireball. Fireball is a spell, of course, that we have to talk about. It is a spell that kind of defines the third level spell. It's maybe the most iconic spell in the game. Now, Fireball is a good spell. I always put a good spell on the overrated list, and this is no exception. 8d6 damage is good damage. 120 foot range, I love it. 20 foot radius sphere, perfect. No concentration means I can cast this spell while I'm concentrating on something else, and that's terrific. But the thing is, is we get players who define their characters around this one spell. It, they get so excited, especially newer players, or players who are not as experienced with spellcasters. They see 8d6 damage, and I mean, that looks like a lot. And then they think, now if I put this on two, three, four people, and they start adding it up in their head, without necessarily taking into account the fact that it's getting halved if they save, halved if they're resistant. Um, and there's, as you go up in levels, that 8d6 is less and less impressive as well. But you will get players who will use their fourth level slots, their fifth level slots, even their sixth level slots, casting Fireball. Now Fireball is a good third level spell. It's a terrible six level spell. You should never be using a six level slot on a fireball. That doesn't give nearly enough damage for that kind of level. So for these reasons, I have to think that this spell is significantly overrated by people, even though it's really good. It's kind of a supplement spell. Cast your main spell that concentrates, something like a hypnotic pattern. Then you cast a fireball as a supplement spell that does the damage without using up your concentration. Useful, but overrated. So let's move on to our most overrated spell at third level. And if you've read my guide, you might be wondering why Fireball wasn't the most overrated spell at third level, just considering what a sacred cow it is for, for most players. Uh, but there is a spell that is so significantly overrated by people who should know better, I had to make it number one. And that spell is Erupting Earth. Now Erupting Earth is a bad spell. It's a blast spell that does 3d12 damage, that's bad damage, over a small area. So why are people even thinking this is a good spell? And what happens is you get optimizers who note that if you increase your spell level with this spell, you're doing an additional d12 damage. And they notice that's a higher scaling than you get with other wizard or sorcerer spells. So they think that if they compare maybe this with fireball as you go up in levels, the point where this one does more is so significant, suddenly it's become a good spell, but it hasn't. The reality is, if you are playing a wizard, trust me on this, at third level, go ahead and take Fireball. Fireball is a good spell. It'll serve you well. You won't regret it. Go ahead and at ninth level, go ahead and take Meteor Swarm. Also, it's a good spell. You won't regret it. In neither case do I think it's the best spell at the level, but they're both solid choices. But as you go in between 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th level, there's not a lot of good blast spells. I mean, Corn of Cold's okay, but it's not good. And so what you end up happening, what ends up happening is people who think that wizards are for blasting, just look at what spells will do the most damage at those levels. And they'll find that when they get to 7th or 8th level, Erupting Earth is doing more damage than other blast spells. But if you can't do more damage than an Erupting Earth at, with your 8th level slot, then don't do damage with your 8th level slot. Do something else amazing. You're a wizard. You can do fantastic things. You can change the world instead of just doing a bit of hit points damage. Like, come on. Let's get with it. This is so overrated. And people who know better are the ones overrating it. So that brings us to our final category, the most underrated spells. And again, this is a category that could have been a lot longer than three spells. It would have been very easy to do. But I did narrow it down to three spells that I'm reasonably comfortable with. So my choice for the third most underrated spell at third level is Thunderstep. The reason I consider Thunderstep to be an underrated spell is it's a spell I see way too often unfairly uh, compared to Misty Step, the second level spell that uses a bonus action to teleport 30 feet to a location you can see. The reason it gets compared is because this one also limits you to a location you can see. But this spell really should be compared to Dimension Door because it's really doing the same kind of function. 
What it does is it allows you to get an ally who's found themselves in a precarious situation and tactically move them to a better position for your party. That is all kinds of useful and it's normally worth a fourth level slot. But if we can do it with a third level slot, all the better. Now we do a little bit of damage as we pop our way out. This spell is not about the damage though. This spell is about tactics, about moving your allies to the positions you need them to be. You've got somebody who's about to go down, you can get them out of the action. Now they can do ranged attacks and they can still contribute or they could heal themselves. They're the uses of being able to move people around to where you need them, when you need to move them, it can't be overstated. And that's why this spell often gets underrated by players. So that brings us to our second most underrated spell at third level. And in my opinion, that spell is Conjure Animals. Now Conjure Animals is a spell that often gets compared to higher level summoning spells in an unfair way, uh, largely due to some mistakes in how summoning works. Uh, but the fact is, is that this spell is a spell that's going to be particularly effective for you in combat if you make some smart decisions. So if you want to use summoning spells in D&D, it's good to know how they work. So this is how Conjure Animals works. The DM will pick either the type of creature or the amount of creatures. So you can choose one, two, four, or eight creatures, and the challenge rating depends on how many you pick. Uh, so the challenge rating is one quarter if you pick eight, or it's a challenge rating of two if you're summoning only one creature. Generally speaking, I think it's better uh, for the player if the DM chooses the amount of creatures, and then the player can choose which type of creature that fits that challenge rating. That gives you some pretty good selections no matter what the DM chooses. Then you don't have to deal with things like them picking random animals that may not help you at all in your situation. So I'm going to put a list up here of animals that I think are good choices for the level. Keep in mind that when we're talking about lower challenge ratings and higher numbers of creatures, I put a little bit of emphasis on creatures not being too big because you start summoning eight large creatures, you're not even going to be able to fit them properly on your map, never mind properly attack your enemies with them. Though, I gotta say that if we're picking one quarter challenge rating creatures, I am tempted to pick giant owls or giant bats just so that the entire party has flying mounts. And that's really up to you. But either way, this spell becomes underrated because we get people comparing it to higher level uh, summoning spells that have some abuses available. But those abuses require an, an ignorance of the rules I just mentioned on picking creatures. So I think this spell ends up being underrated for that reason. So let's move on to our number one most underrated spell at third level. And this is a spell that originally was my number one best spell at third level. And then it made my number one most underrated spell at third level and I had to make a choice. And I decided in the end, this spell was even more underrated than it is good, though it certainly is both of those things. And that spell is Leoman's Tiny Hut. Now I talked last video about how good Rope Trick is because Rope Trick gets you a guaranteed safe short rest. Well, Leoman's Tiny Hut will get you a guaranteed safe long rest. A long rest obviously is much better than a short rest if you can get it. Furthermore, because this spell is a ritual, you don't even need your third level slot open to cast this spell. Now, how good is this spell? Here's how good it is. If you are inside it and you can contain up to nine medium sized creatures in this spell, there is no way for an enemy to enter this spell short of negating the magic, such as with the dispel magic, or some form of teleport, such as a dimension door. That means ancient red dragon, sorry, you can't do anything. Tarask, sorry, you can't get in the hut. This is a third level spell. 10 minutes to cast, and during that time, you can see outside, nothing can see inside, so don't try getting in with something like a misty step. And you, you and your allies can enter or leave the, the hut freely during the duration. But while you're inside, of course you have, uh, temperatures are properly maintained and it's safe and dry and so you can rest easily. You probably don't even need to set anybody on watch. You can just rest your eight hours in total safety. Now that is just huge. Now does, some people have said in the past, 
the weakness of this spell is all you need is somebody with burrowing speed and they can just go underneath and up. Now even if that was possible I think that that is the kind of tactical situation I want to have if I'm being attacked. But according to Jeremy Crawford, well, he said this. Which he says that it does indeed have a floor, which means you can't even burrow in. There's really just no way in unless you can dispel the magic or teleport in. That is amazing for a third level spell. I can't believe they didn't have a saving throw for enemies to enter or something, but they didn't. So this spell is amazing and my most underrated spell at third level. That's my list for the most overrated, the most underrated, the best and the worst spells at third level. That said, there are some really good spells that didn't make my list. Here's a few honorable mentions for you. That said, until we get to fourth level next week, that's all for today. So, I think I'll just sit back and relax and have some fun. Because D&D is for everyone. Mm -hmm.